Chinese people love to eat. If eating were an Olympic sport, no other country would come close. I've never seen a nation show so much dedication to consuming anything that walks, crawls, flies, swims, slithers, or grows in my whole life until I travel to China. Bizarre foods? Yes, please. I'm a food lover, therefore, most of my time spent traveling the world is wandering through food markets in search of tasting anything that is recommended to that country or indulging in food that locals love to eat. I thought that I was quite an adventurous eater until China seriously tested all of my culinary barriers. Spit soup. Chinese bird saliva soup may gross you over, but it's damn expensive. Bird's nest soup, also known as bird saliva soup, is one of the most famous but also most controversial delicacies in Chinese cuisine. Many people are willing to spend fortunes on this soup as they believe eating it will help them maintain their youth as well as have a long healthy life and a strong body. According to traditional Chinese medicine, it promotes good health, especially for the skin. This soup has been a part of Chinese cuisine for generations. Chinese people began consuming bird's nest soup during the Ming dynasty. The dish is named so because the main ingredient in preparing it is edible bird's nest. Yes. The soup is made from edible bird nests which are called the caviar of the east. Bird's nest soup is extremely rare and valuable. The main ingredient is the nest of the swiftlet bird which is usually found in Southeast Asia. Edible bird's nests are among the most expensive animal products consumed by humans. The most prized are red nests from the red nest swiftlet, which can cost as much as $10,000 per kilogram. However, the most common are white and black nest swiftlet nests, which run between $5,000 and $6,000 per kilogram. The reason behind the dish also being known as bird saliva soup is also very interesting. The swiftlet lives in dark caves. Instead of twigs and straw, however, the swiftlet makes its nest from strands of its gummy saliva, which is produced by the glands under the tongue. The nest then hardens when exposed to air. Bird's nest doesn't have a lot of taste, and its texture is similar to softened gelatin and jelly. Chinese people usually cook bird's nest soup with rock sugar and serve it as a sweet dessert soup. Some people prefer to cook it without rock sugar and instead mix it with some warm milk. Century Eggs A century egg, also known as a hundred-year egg, is a Chinese delicacy. A century egg is made by preserving an egg, usually, from a duck, such that the shell becomes speckled, then white becomes a dark brown gelatinous material, and the yolk becomes deep green and creamy. The surface of the egg white may be covered with beautiful crystalline frost or pine tree patterns. The white supposedly doesn't have much flavor, but the yolk smells strongly of ammonia and sulfur and is said to have a complex earthy flavor. Ideally, century eggs are made by storing raw eggs for a few months in a mixture of wood ash, salt, lime, and maybe tea with rice straw or clay. The alkaline chemicals raise the pH of the egg to 9 to 12 or even higher and break down some of the proteins and fats in the egg into flavorful molecules. The ingredients listed above are not typically the ingredients listed on the eggs sold in stores. Those eggs are made from duck eggs, lye or sodium hydroxide, and salt. That sounds scary, but it's probably okay to eat. A problem does arise with some century eggs because the curing process is sometimes accelerated by adding another ingredient to the eggs, lead oxide. Lead oxide, like any other lead compound, is poisonous. This hidden ingredient is most likely going to be found in eggs from China, where the faster method of preserving the eggs is more common. Sometimes zinc oxide is used instead of lead oxide. Though zinc oxide is an essential nutrient, too much of it can lead to a copper deficiency, so it's not something you want to eat either. How do you avoid poisonous century eggs? Look for packages that explicitly state that the eggs were made without lead oxide. Don't assume the eggs are lead-free just because lead isn't listed as an ingredient. Many people avoid eating century eggs because of the rumor that they have been soaked in horse urine. There isn't any solid evidence that horse urine is involved in the curing, especially because urine is slightly acidic, not basic. A soup with bite. Shark fin soup has been considered a symbol of wealth and a delicacy in China since the Ming dynasty. It was a dish that only the emperor and his guests would be served. Eventually, Wealthy families and business people in Hong Kong and other cities with Chinese populations would also serve it. The popularity rose about 20 years ago when the Chinese middle class grew rapidly and with it the demand for luxury items. The soup has become a standard dish served to impress guests at banquets, business dinners, and weddings. The demand is also expanding into other Asian countries and cities around the world that have larger Chinese communities. The top consumers of shark fin soup are China, Malaysia, and Thailand. 
The result is that now millions of people want shark fin soup and that shark and ray populations are being decimated in every corner of the globe. And there is no shortage of eager suppliers as every country with a commercial fishing fleet is chasing the money made from fins. Fins can bring in hundreds of dollars on the market, with the average being about $450 per pound. A bowl of soup can cost $100. The battle to save the world's sharks from extinction has not yet been won, despite one of the most significant wildlife success stories of recent years. Consumption of shark fin soup in China has fallen by about 80% since 2011, government figures and private surveys show, after a celebrity-driven public awareness campaign and a government crackdown on extravagant banquets. Chip Choices When it comes to chips, I'm all for a variety of flavors. But China has managed to take it to the next level with its bizarre abundance of crazy flavors. That's why Lay's has upped its localized snack game with a new range of creative, and slightly bizarre, Chinese chip flavors. They've also collaborated with a few recognizable local brands to give weight to what may have otherwise been a branding exercise in weird for weird sake. Firstly, Lay's would experiment with a new Zongxi flavor. Acknowledging that sticky rice by itself doesn't make for an inspiring chip, they've decided to stuff this variety with salted egg yolk and roast pork. Secondly, the hugely popular brand of braised duck snacks, Zhou Heiya, is already visible on many commercial corners of Beijing streets. Now they're one step closer to snack domination seeing their signature items flavor bagged for convenience store shelves too. Moreover, what says quick Beijing snack more than a bag of Peking duck flavored chips? While this addition is not the product of a collaboration between specific local brands, the iconic image of the Temple of Heaven's Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest plus the limited Beijing flavor seems like Lay's received Beijing's seal of approval to promote the city. Finally, at this point, we've seen white rabbit made into ice cream, milk tea, and even perfume slash vapes. But Lay's is surely the first to try and put a savory spin on the milk-flavored candy. And despite being an otherwise strange mashup, just by featuring the White Rabbit brand, one that has huge nostalgic value among several generations of Chinese, these are likely to be a hit. Seahorse Shish Kebab There is a Cantonese saying that the Chinese eat everything that flies, except airplanes, everything with four legs, except tables and everything that swims, except submarines, and visitors to Beijing's fast food market during the Olympic Games will be left in no doubt of that. But the delicacies of Wang Fujing Snack Street are not only about taste and appetite. The Chinese also believe that certain animals, or their limbs and organs, have medicinal or life-enhancing properties. Believe it or not, China is the world's largest consumer of seahorses with an annual demand of approximately 500 tons. When dried they become a crunchy sidewalk snack that tastes like, well, I'll let this guy tell you. It tastes like potato chips, it's good. Gutter oil. The use of gutter oil it turns out is pretty common. This refers to a process of pulling waste oil from sewers, grease traps, waste from slaughterhouses, reprocessing it, and then selling it as cooking oil. The slop then ends up in processing plants where it is processed with other animal fat through filtration or boiling. The oil eventually makes its way to street vendors and hole-in-the-wall restaurants that use it as recycled cooking oil. Gutter oil is reported to account for one-tenth of cooking oil in China. Besides being downright disgusting, the oil is also said to contain carcinogens and other toxins. China has been fighting the practice for years. Earlier this month a man from China's Jiangsu province was sentenced to life in prison for making and selling gutter oil, Xinhua reported. China has long battled food safety concerns. But in a country where cooking oil is at a premium, it will likely be a while before officials can effectively crack down on the practice. Do you dare to try these dishes when having the chance to travel to China? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.